You never hear people say, why devil? It's always, why God? But he's the one that comes in. Amen? Create problem to frustrate us, to remove us from God. And then we are asking, why God? And we are blaming God for not, for not, for not answering. Why don't we say, why devil? What are you doing here? Why don't we blame the devil? Why always God? People blame his strategy. Very cunning. Does Job serve you for not? Is she, is he serving you for not? Is it not because you have done that thing they wanted? Let him be disappointed. Let her be disappointed and see Hmm, what they will do next. You expect God to do something. He did not. Right now, God is expecting you to endure. Amen? I put parenthesis, persevere. You expect God to do something he, he did not. But God is expecting you to endure it. To overcome it. And to persevere. Amen? I need you to endure, says the Lord. Again, we cannot hide the hurt. We cannot hide the disappointment. What we are feeling right now, we cannot hide it. Because we, we know that we are diligent. We know that we have been faithful. We believe our God will do it. He didn't. The hurt is visible. You can say we are fine, put on a fake smile, but we are hurt. And the devil knows it. Amen? We are knocked off balance. And our mind, our hearts, is going through war. Luke 10, 19. Amplify said, listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions, the ability to exercise the authority over all the powers of the enemy, Satan, and nothing in any way will hurt you. Amen? God, you have the power. Not only do we have power over Satan, we have power over our words and our thoughts, what we are doing at this moment. By the power of our words, we will release the hand of God to guide us, guide our heart, guide our mind. And by the power of our words, we can release the enemy to finish what he started. Amen. Psalms 42.5, NLT says, Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again. My Savior, my God. When we are down, it's not over. Amen? We are disappointed right now. It's not over. We are discouraged right now. It's not over. Psalm 31, 24. So be strong and courageous. All you who put your hope in the Lord. Amen? Don't stay there. Don't stay in pity party for long. Amen? It happens to all of us. No matter how many years you be believing God, no matter the firebrand <laughs> uh, child of God that you are, it hurts. Nobody... I don't think anybody will be disappointed and the first thing they do is jump up and down. At the initial moment, it hurts. Amen? I watched this movie. This guy has been fighting for so long. His enemy has been trying to kill him even before he was born because his destiny was so great. So they, 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 they coming from the future to come and kill him in the past. <laughs> Amen? But right now, he's exhausted. Self-pity, sets in. 
He can't do it anymore, he said. This battle just can't be won. We have been fighting, we are fighting a losing battle. I am tired. And he started to slide down. You know when you, you, you are overwhelmed with failure, when you, 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 you don't want to try anymore. And you lean on the wall, you just start to slide down like <laughs> like, like cartoon. <laughs> You're heading to the floor. <laughs> and once you reach down there, somebody has to drag you back up. And he was reaching that point. So his friend grabbed him and pinned him to the wall. And he held him there until this guy got angry. His friend said, that's good, much better. He asked why. He said, I cannot walk with self-pity. Anger is better. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I will not tell you. The Bible did not say anger is better than self-pity. Amen? <laughs> but, hmm, if you don't buy anger, say, devil, get it behind me. Huh? Hmm. He will steal, he will kill, and he will destroy. Amen? So anger can work. Because the enemy comes to steal from us, to kill and to destroy. After he has killed, and then destruction. So if he, ha if he has already killed, why then the destruction? Right? The final. The final of the final. Right? Hellfire. He's, he doesn't want to stop at just killing the flesh. Psalm 617, put on salvation as your helmet. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You get ready for battle. Amen? That's where when you get angry at the enemy, you get ready for battle to stand your ground. Amen? To stand your ground. Stand and fight. Why? Reason one. Again, we have an enemy, the devil, roaming around, seeking who to devour. And he cannot just devour any believer, no. He's seeking the one that is open. He's seeking the one that is vulnerable. He's seeking the one that is down right now. He's seeking that one that is disappointed. Amen? And this is a time that person is open to false prophets, to false teachers that will say, come, the Lord said this. I know, somebody will say, I know a man of God somewhere that will tell you something and it will come to pass right now. Amen? They will. Reason two. James 1, 2, 3, 4. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind comes, consider it an opportunity for a great joy, NLT. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So that disappointment is not, even that, that God allow it, it has a purpose in our lives. It's not to kill us or to destroy us. God allow it because there's a there's is building something in us. Amen. That problem is building something in us. It's a time to cling to God. Amen. To draw us closer to God. Is is building us up. Romans 5 3. NLT. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trial. For we know that they help us develop endurance. Amen? It is 
a test. It could be a test. Again, let's see what she will do. Let's see what he will do. Maybe they are serving you because of this thing or that thing that you have done. Don't fail. Amen? Don't fail God. Don't disappoint God. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Even though you are disappointed, don't disappoint God. Amen? But when we, when we disappoint God, Satan is rejoicing. I got him. I got her. Every challenge we face in this life is to build us up. Disappointment is a building block for endurance. Amen? How can you endure if you never face anything? If you have not faced disappointment, <laughs> it's coming. Wait for it. Why? Our faith in God has to be tested. Somewhere, somehow, it may not be through disappointment, but this, our faith in God, somewhere will be tested. Somehow, will be tested. I believe in God is not in words only. Amen? We have an enemy that <laughs> he does not want you to make heaven. He doesn't want you believing in God because he knows where you are going because he's he been there. And he does not want you to go there. He, hell is for him. He has, the, he has lost every chance. And he's dragging people to hell every day. And he's succeeding in the life of someone that said they believe in God. I believe in God has to be proven. Amen? It's not in words only. The Bible is full of people that went through all kinds of trial. The Savior of the world is born, and now my child is dead. Rachel could not be comforted, for her children were no more. Anna, a young bride, married only seven years. Her husband died. The Bible says she just moved into the church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> she was a widow for 84 years. I was trying to calculate how old she is when she got married. I started from 100. No, I think she's more than 100 because <laughs> she'll be nine years old when she got married. I know they married the young them, but this is ridiculous. This is child abuse. So, so she's more than 100 years old. Amen? She just, you know what? Let me just, let me just move to God's house and call it a day. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> what would you do? What would I do? That marriage I wanted so much. And now I'm finally married. Starting to enjoy myself, enjoying the en enjoyment, and now death comes. I don't know how he died. Sickness, accident, war. But he died after seven years. What will I do? What will you do? Cause God and die? God, why me? How can you do this? Are you sure you are God? Are you there? I will not serve you anymore. Let me return to the world. Let me return to the enemy. Let me return. Go, let me turn around and go to hell. It's better. Is it? What will you do when the unexpected happens? When your heart is broken? When your world crumbles? Sometimes it both not just your world alone, but your universe and your galaxy all at once. Just collapse from underneath you. And you just drop to the ground. And you don't know what to do. And all the why me, no answer.
If we cannot survive a small disappointment of not getting that job, how could we survive disappointment of losing a child or losing that husband, that wife at a young age? <coughs> Lost at many levels, and each one hurts more than the other. How could you know you are in the race if nothing is trying to knock you off? We are in a race. We are all in or all out. We can have one leg in. We can have two masters. And I'm all in for God, no matter what. If God comes, if God doesn't come, I am all for God. Even if God will not answer, we will not bow to any situation. If nothing is trying to knock you off, how would you know that you are in a race? How would you get to your destiny then if you get knocked off? If the devil now succeed in knocking you off, how would you get to the destiny? Amen. Romans 2. Uh, seven to NLT. He gives eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after the glory and the honor and the immortality that God offers. We have a destiny in this life. Amen? God has a plan, purpose, destiny for us while we are on this earth, living our life on this earth. Amen. And it's good because this life, Jesus came and died for us in this life. This life is important. We are to enjoy it. Amen. We are to enjoy it. This is, this is God's creation. This is God's creation. And we are meant to enjoy it. We are meant to have abundant life. Amen. That destiny that God has for us we want to get there. We want to enjoy it. that expectation we have in this life. We want to get there and enjoy it. The Bible, God, Jesus said, what things soever your heart desires, ask and it shall be given. So God wants good things for us here. Amen. A good destiny for us here. And we should expect it. Amen. We should expect, yes, it may come, it may not come. But still expect it, amen? Still expect it with both hands and feet, <laughs> amen? <laughs> still pray for it, still long for it, still desire it. It's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing, amen? Even if it's a sh you come for a short while, but still expect it because it's good, because it is what God wants for us, amen? That we're expecting the, the great one doesn't mean the earthly one shouldn't be expected anymore, amen? We still should expect it. But when it doesn't happen, it shouldn't knock us off. Now completely off even the greater ones. Amen? That's where there's a problem. Amen? He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good. Seeking after the glory and the honor and immortal immortality that God offers. Because the thing is that once we are disappointed, what we are doing, we stop doing it. The good, that, the little that we are doing for God, we stop doing it. And we say we work for God, which is good, but sometimes I don't really see what is it I'm doing for God. What am I doing for God? This, this is the work. Cleaning the house, that is for God. I mean, that is the work that I'm doing. Is that so great? You have no idea how much I want to run away from standing here. But then I guess, what, what else am I doing for God? I don't see the thing 
that I'm doing for God. So even this little one I'm doing for God, I'm going to stop it because I don't have this. I call everything I do for God reasonable because I'm trying to (laughs) say that I am not doing anything for God because I know there are people that are really dying for God. People are being killed for their faith. And I'm still praying, oh God, if I face persecution, Will I take bullet for Jesus? And the answer still scares me. And I'm praying not to meet him. <laughs> I'm praying not to meet persecution. Amen? Because I don't know what my answer will be. Because they will gone in your head, your life, or deny Jesus. <laughs> and then the worst, they will put the gun on somebody you love. Maybe your child. I read, I keep saying about this book that somebody gave me about eight women that went through persecution. I read the story of one woman and I didn't read it, I didn't continue. Because they put the gun on her child, seven year old child. And they killed the child. But she stood her ground. You are either all in or all out. God does not take 50% of us, Satan 50% of us. God does not take 90% of us, and Satan 10% of us. (laughs) You are either all in or all out. Amen? How would you know if you're in the race, if nothing is wobbling you? And if you get knocked off, how will you now get to where we're going? It isn't easy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and the, the, the road to, to, to heaven is narrow. Amen. And another person gave an interpretation. It's not that it is narrow at is have to squeeze. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I don't think that is that, that is the narrow that he meant. Uh, maybe it's one interpretation. Amen? So another interpretation is that when we start on this road to heaven and I begin to drop all things, the road is getting narrower because I can't carry all the baggage with me. Amen? While you are in the world, ah, the road is wide. You can do everything you want. Go anywhere you want. Right? But now that I'm a child of God, I put away some friends. My road is smaller. I put away maybe drinking. My road is smaller. You know, all things, I'm cutting them off. You know, my my road is getting smaller. Amen? (laughs) My road is getting smaller. It's no longer wide. I can no longer do everything I want. Right? So I'm narrowing my road. Right? So it's not like I'm really, I have to squeeze. I'm just narrowing my, my road is just getting smaller as so I knock off some things. Amen. So I shouldn't be, I shouldn't, if I keep if I carry everything, I will not make it. Amen. But as things are knocking off, then I'm checking if I'm running the race. Because I've allowed them to fall off. I know that I'm running the race. But if things are trying and they're succeeding in knocking me off, well, I would not, I'm not, I will not make it to where I'm going. Amen? That makes sense? We get lost? <laughs> Amen? We can answer. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Revelations 2, 7. To him that overcome, come it. This is King James. I will give to it of the tree of life, which is in the midst 
of the paradise of God. Revelation 2.11, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Revelation 2.17, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Revelation 2.26 and he that overcometh and keep my works unto the end, to him will I give power over nations. Revelation 3, 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Revelation 3.12, he that overcometh, will I give a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go no more out. I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out from heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Revelation 3.21, he that overcometh, I will grant a seat with me on my throne, even as I also overcame and I'm set down with my father in his throne. Whew. If I miss heaven, I'm stupid. <laughs> Amen? I keep heaven. I, in my, I, I, I make sure I talk, talk about it to myself. Hell, I don't, try, I don't put it out of my mind. Because if not, is this, this life, anything can, I cannot, nobody is there. Until you're standing in heaven, in Abraham's bosom, wherever Abraham is. Amen? Because the, the rich man we know is in hell. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but uh, Lazarus in Abraham bosom, wherever it is, <laughs> until you are there, <laughs> you, have not, you, haven't, you haven't reached yet. Amen. You are still in the race. And we can still get knocked off, no matter whether we are speaking in tongue, whether we are praying 20 hours a day, we read, the, we, we read Bible 24 hours, until you are there, you can still get knocked off. He that overcome, he that overcome it. What are we overcoming? The trials of life that never ends. Never ends. When you think you overcome this one, it's like a um, conveyor belt. Another one just roll right in. Even the one that you thought you overcame, go back, <laughs> goes back to the line. <laughs> and a different shade <laughs> of that thing. Come back, come again. I thought I've dealt with you. But no, there's another level to it that you have to deal with again. Oh, Jesus. I'm not the only one fighting battles, right? <laughs> I feel so heavy these past weeks. I don't know. I can't say this is it or this is it. I'm not thinking any particular thought. I can't point to any particular thought. I'm just. <coughs> Whatever it is, you must overcome. You must overcome. You must overcome. You must persevere. You must endure. Encourage yourself in the word of God. That is the weapon we have. Pick up your Bible. The word of, the word of God is sweet. When I read it, the word of God is sweet. I find the word of God sweet. 
I understand what Proverbs say about me being like a honeycomb. You know, like when I saw I read the verse of the day, I just say, I just, I just, I just, it's nice. The word of God is just nice to the soul. Amen. First Corinthians ten thirteen. They had no temptation taking you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able, but will with the same temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen? Whatever we are facing is no new. We are not the first. We will not be the last. Amen? Hallelujah. Keep expecting the best from your father. For peradventure, he decides to leave the mountain unmovable. Amen? It's okay. <laughs> Amen? If he decides to leave the mountain unmovable, it's okay. Eternal life with God is what we're after. When we get to see Jesus as he is, and the Bible say, and be as he is. Amen? He will be even as he is. I cannot describe to you how Jesus is now, but we will be as he is. The thought should be awesome. Amen? The thought is awesome. Me and Bishop Jesus was trying to figure out what it's like. <laughs> yeah, I always ask, you, see, this mansion that we're going to be in, are we going to cook there. Uh, if the doctor that I come to my house, we go to make coffee and drink. Yeah, I'm just like, you know, trying to think, of, you know, the, how would this place be? You know, are we will be traveling to each other's home, we would be doing visiting. How, is there a bed? Are we going to sleep? You know, it just, you know, fun thoughts, you know? <laughs> just fun thoughts of what this, the next life will be like. You know, it's a fun thought. How is Jesus, when he, when he grows from the dead, from here to there, he no longer has to walk or use donkey. He just be where he wants to be. Amen? He can walk through wall and be solid at the same time. Amen? <laughs> fun thought, I like that. Amen? <laughs> what we're going to, what it's going to be like. And my favorite one, no more trash on the street. Oh, my God. When he raised, I can't go outside. I'm so, my God. I went to South Jamaica. I was so traumatized. I just left. <laughs> my environment needs to be clean. I don't know why. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> going down that direction, no, I'd rather be going on at least to Long Island. <laughs> when I start going towards 160, 115, I just turn around, just come back up. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> so I'm always cleaning because my environment needs to be clean. If not, I just, I just, I feel like I just, I, I, I get panic attack. So I, I, I look forward to a clean universe. <laughs> Fun thoughts, amen? There's a there's greater thing waiting for us. He that overcomes. Oh. That is our final destination. Our ultimate de destination. No matter where we're going in this life, that is where we're going. If we reach everywhere else in this life and miss that one, 
it has been all a waste. Amen? So, don't let the enemy, even if he managed to steal this destiny, he shouldn't steal that destiny. Amen? There is nothing in this life that is worth losing the ultimate destination for. Amen? I can do without it. Amen? I can do without it. I'm not married yet. I'm okay. Amen? I was telling myself, okay, if a husband comes, I will grab him. If I get that husband, I will grab him. <laughs> Find out where he has been for long. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't leave again. <laughs> Amen? But if he doesn't come, I'm okay being... Um, first I told you, monk. I said, who is monk? And I thought, oh, the people in Tibet. No, so that's not, that's not what Paul said. And I said, okay, oh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I gave me the eunuch. <laughs> I don't know what monk does, but <laughs> amen. It's okay. If you don't get that thing, it's okay. It's okay. Hallelujah. 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 So we are diligent, but disappointment come. Don't let it lead to discouragement, because a discouragement, a discouraged person, will give up, will lose heart, will stop. And when you stop, you can you are not enduring. And it is the endurance that takes you now, amen. To your destiny. When you endure, persevere, overcome. Amen? You, you can continue to thrive to your destination and then to the ultimate destination. Amen? Which is to be with our Father at last. Amen? To see that is, that is the way all, that is the main aim. Amen? This whole life we're living. It will make heaven home at last. Because that we know is inevitable, according to English language, right? Inevitable. Cannot be helped, cannot be stopped, cannot change. They say death is a part of life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> death is part of life. Amen. When you mention death, God forbid. How can He forbid it? It's part of life. Yeah, so eventually, none of us will be here. Amen? <laughs> but to close your eye in that and open it in the wrong place and it's for all eternity. That's scary. That is, that is scary. People that say, oh, there's no God. They don't believe in God. And because they say they don't believe in God, that means oh, mean there's no God. Oh, foolish. The Bible says they're only a fool that says there's no God. Everybody becomes born again once everybody once they're dead. But when, when somebody is dead, you now everything is your eye is open, your ear is open, your nose is open, everything is open. Now the truth, you're faced with the truth. And then the, the road to heaven turns to fire. What's that movie we were watching? And the family said, Oh God, oh, say, you say they, they saw light when they were near they have a near death experience. So they want to die. <laughs> The family says, okay, go ahead. So as they're going through the light, now the light turns to fire. And it's hard, but you know, so he's not screaming now, but he's dead. But he's screaming there, but he's dead here. <laughs> Ay, that is horrible. The rich man had everything money can buy. But since Jesus told that story, he has been in hell for over 2,000 years. And there will never be an end to it. I wonder if they notice the passing of time in hell. 
which is also add to the punishment of hell. He that overcometh I will set down with my father in his throne. Amen. There's so many things awaiting us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So endure to the end. Amen. Endure it to the end. We don't want to live a life that we have to endure. We pray for beautiful life here. But if we have to endure, endure to the end. Amen. If lost, unbearable lost, come. Cry. But get up and keep running the race. Amen. Things will come. But it's, it, it, the thing is, the Bible says we are falling, but we're not, we're not utterly cast down. Amen. And God will make a way of escape. He will make you of his no matter how much it is hurting right now. No matter how disappointed, discouraged we feel right now. When we lean on him, he will make you of his king. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray tonight, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I just, just praise him. For he is God. For his word. For he left us his word. He left us his Holy Spirit. He did not leave us comfortless. Even when situation come. He did not leave us comfortless. He left us a comforter. That we can fall on, lean on, hold on to. He left out his word. And his word is alive. His, his word is alive. And we that trust his word, we know what it does to us when we read it. We know how, how his word ministers to us. How his word makes us feel. We know that his word is alive. When we take it as our tablet and as our food, we know. We know his word ministers to us and comforts us and brings healings to us. We know. So our God did not leave us comfortless. So Father, we thank you tonight. God with us, that is who you are. You are with us always. Whether we are in prison or in the hall or in a hospital bed, you are with us. We are suffering loss of a child, loss of a spouse, loss of a loved one, loss of things, loss of that thing, that blessing. You are with us. You say you will never leave us, nor forsake us. That we lose something does not mean we lost God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, excellent God. Wonderful God. The God have, that I have made every preparation for his children. And at the same time, you have, you, 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 have, you have given us the future. We know the future. We know the future. We are not blind to what is coming. We are not ignorant of what is coming. We are not ignorant of what, the glory that is, that, is, that is waiting for us. He has revealed it to us so that we can Take heart and keep running. So why would I be down now because of this situation? When I see the glory that is coming. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's play. Let every heart be comforted tonight. Let every heart, every heavy heart be comforted tonight. Yes, you are going through that thing. But look at the glory that is awaiting you. Just remove your eyes from that situation right now. And look at what is waiting for you. 
Look at what God has prepared for you. Look at that mansion that you're going to live in. Maybe you're sharing one bedroom right now. But look at your mansion waiting for you. The glory that is coming cannot be compared to nothing down here. So be comforted tonight. Hallelujah. You that are heavy tonight. You that is have been crying. You that is going through one situation or another. You that don't know how you're going to manage. How that bill will be paid. If you're going to be healed. You that don't know what else to do. You are so lost, frustrated, and confused. Just look at what is coming. Look at what your father has for you. The eyes have not seen, ear have not heard. Has even entered the heart of man what God has prepared. So even the little that, that has been revealed, is be, our mind can't even imagine what is, what, what is coming. The reality of it is too much. Hallelujah. Waiting for us. So remove your eyes from that trouble right now. And just gaze at that. Imagine. Like I was imagining what it would be. Just dwell on that. Just imagine what it could be. Hallelujah. Imagine if the shop all day. Imagine if you're going to. Imagine what kind of life would there be. Imagine what you would do. Hallelujah. A different kind of life. Painless. No itching, no scratching, nothing at all. No secret, no day, no night. There's no, there's no clock. <laughs> there's no, amen. It's just beautiful. Hallelujah. Be comforted tonight. Whatever have weighed you down. Be comforted tonight. Say to yourself, I will overcome. A greater thing is waiting for me. This thing I'm going through now will not kill me. This thing I'm going through now will no longer drag me down. This thing I'm going through now is temporary. It stops here. It ends here. It dies here. It is not going with me to where I'm going. Hallelujah. Be comforted tonight. Oh, ye that labor and are heavy laden, draw, drop them at the feet of Jesus and pick up his rest, his peace, and just rejoice and go about your day. Because greater is he that is in you. Hallelujah, my God. Thank you for lifting burdens tonight. Thank you for lifting that heavy, that person that is heavy laden tonight. Thank you for showing that person the glory of things to come. Hallelujah. That person going through persecution. Papa, as Stephen lift up his face and saw Jesus. So let it be tonight. Hallelujah to your holy name. Beautiful God, you are with us, talking to us, interacting with us, ministering to us. Sometimes we allow our situation to just blind us, that we don't see that you are with us all the time. Situation clog our mind, our hearts, and we forget that you are here. Have mercy, have mercy. Precious to you, Holy Spirit, you are here comforting us. And we still allow this to just weigh us down as if you are not here. Have mercy. Forgive us our ignorance. Forgive us when we place, we, we, we magnify problem as if they're bigger than our God. Forgive our ignorance. Hallelujah. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, your patience, your love. Where sin abound, your grace multiplies. Thank you, Lord. 
you are truly good father awesome father and we thank you tonight we thank you tonight help us to endure every situation help us to persevere help us to overcome because there's crown of life waiting for us there's paradise waiting for us there is something that our name will be written on that only us that receive it will know what is written therein. And we want to receive it. So much is waiting for us. We cannot allow the situations of this life to make us miss that. Encourage us, oh God. Strengthen us, oh God. Empower us, oh God. Equip us, oh God. Hallelujah to your holy name. Help us to keep our eyes on that price as we run this race. Paul said, forgetting the past. Focusing on what is to come. We can't look at the past disappointment and expect to keep running the race. We have to let it go. Hallelujah, my God. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, oh God. You do not give up on us, Papa. Thank you for that. You give us millions and millions of chances every day to do it again, to try it again, to get up. To, Papa, thank you. Thank you that you do not give up on us. Thank, thank you that you don't say, I gave you, I gave you grace yesterday. I'm not doing it again. No. Even after the Israel, I keep disappointing you. He kept fighting for them. Even when you say you will no longer, but you show them mercy, you keep fighting for them. Papa, you keep fighting for us. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You keep fighting for us. Thank you. You never give up on us. Thank you. We bless your name tonight. We bless your name tonight. We bless your holy name, Papa. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's put together our offerings. Amen. Hallelujah. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am.
Father, oh Lord God, we bless your name, oh God. We love you, Lord. We exalt you. We lift up your name on high, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the word that we heard today, oh God. Father, thank you, Lord, for blessing, oh God, us through this word, oh God. Thank you for Pastor Regina, oh God. We pray that you continue to reveal yourself to her in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you all the glory for her life, oh God. Continue to strengthen her, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And as we have heard this word today, oh God, may it dwell richly in us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we pray, oh God, that we go out there and be doers of your word and not just hearers of your word. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of the living God, we just surrender ourselves to you that you continue to help us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father for the offering, oh God, as we have given to you, oh God, our offering, our tithes, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, and we thank you for your word that says that you will give us back good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. We receive that from you, oh God, in the name of Jesus as we live here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, because you said that you would never leave us nor forsake us, oh God. And so, Father, Lord, we thank you that you continue to be with us you continue to guide us. You continue to keep us, protect us, our families, our loved ones, this church, hope restoration. In the name of Jesus, we will come back again to give you glory, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Say to yourself, for surely goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life and I remain in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. So on Saturday, this Saturday, we have a benefit concert. And the benefit concert is towards our medical mission to Cape Verde in September. So we would like everyone to come out for that benefit concert. It's 7 o'clock on Saturday. God bless you. Amen.